Well, good morning. A little stretch here. Um, need some coffee. But while I was thinking about it, I wanted to come out and run this fuel pump I have. It's out of a Himalayan. I have a carburetor on mine, so I don't. I no longer use the fuel pump. Uh, but I wanted to overheat one, if possible, and just run it in ambient air, you know, without being cooled by uh, being surrounded by fuel to see if, you know, any accumulative time, you know, will destroy the pump due to it overheating. Uh, so we're going to pop it out of the fixture. Here he is. He's got probably 1,500 miles on him. So it's pretty good. I was working when I took it out. Unfortunately, I might destroy it by doing this test, but hey, at least we'll know what a Himalayan pump can be subjected to and survive or not. Um, we'll take the temperature, we'll run it, check it at two minutes, check it at five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes if it makes it that long, um, and see what happens. Remember, this would be equivalent to someone running out of gas and leaving their key on until their battery basically probably drained down, which Will that ever happen? Probably not. Uh, but accumulative damage, let's say you run out of gas and you leave your key on for 20 seconds and you do it again, 20 seconds, and you do it again. I don't I don't know that that's gonna add up to any serious damage, possible. I mean, obviously people have fuel pump failures. I am the, of the belief that the fuel pump failures are being caused by piss poor relays, which aren't giving or providing the amperage the pump needs to run properly. Uh, and that's probably a big contributor to the pumps failing. Um, but anyway, we're going to try to make this pump fail. And uh, again, like I said, this is going to be equivalent to you uh, leaving your key on for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes without any gas in your tank. I'm not sure that happens all that often, but uh, we'll see. Stay tuned. So here's a Himalayan pump disassembled. Um... This is the part that's sticking out the bottom of your fuel tank. The pickup here on the pump goes down and sits in that area like that. And so it's gonna draw fuel down to this level, oops, sorry, this level before it starts cavitating and sucking air. And so from about where that red wire terminates there. From there down, there's gonna, you know, there's gonna be fuel in this cup, which, you know, that's gonna be from about this first step in here down, which is, you know, that much unusable fuel, basically. So it's always gonna have some fuel because you can't draw that fuel out. Um, is that fuel helping it in any way to keep it cool? Don't know possible. The way this fuel pump works, by the way, is it draws fuel in through that filter inside this sump and obviously pressurizes it. There's a built-in, I think, a three-bar pressure regulator somewhere. Where are you? Three-bar. Yeah, there he is. Right there. So then it pressurizes the fuel in here up through the top to this section right here and if it exceeds three bars the overflow or the excess comes out the fuel pressure regulator and the regulated three bars of fuel pressure goes down this port to this port out to your fuel injection system anyway that's that's not really in a nutshell i was going to say you know that's a himalayan fuel pump in a nutshell but i don't see any nuts Anyway, let's hook up this pump and monitor some temperatures using that battery and that temperature probe. And let's see uh, how long it takes for it to get hot. Okay, here we go. Um, she's running. Let's see what we got here. 66 degrees. Let's check down here, 63. So 63, the wood's 61, and I'm going to come back in two minutes and see what happens. And just in case there's a question of voltage, we're checking voltage here for you. 12.2, 12.3 volts while the motor's running. Okay, we're um, 
they're three minutes in. We started off at 63, I think, 64. Let's see what we get here. Pull the trigger. We're up to 68 degrees. So it's come up five degrees, maybe. Oh, there goes another degree. Let's push on to 10 minutes. Because right now, I'm not sure I'm buying the overheat theory. Okay, 10 minutes in. It's starting to finally get warm. Look, I was able to pick up a temperature of 86 degrees by probing up and down, finding the hot spot. This end, I think, is, yeah, there we go. 89. Ooh, almost 91 there, it looks like. This plastic end gets a little warmer, too. Look at that, 90, 95. But we're looking at 10 minutes of running at 12.2 volts without any fuel at all. I don't know anyone who's left their fuel pump on for 10 minutes in a dry gas tank. But even if they did, I mean, after 10 minutes, we're not even up to 100 degrees yet. I'm pretty sure the electric motor can withstand these temperatures, at least I hope so. Finally, the main body at the bottom is getting up to 90. Okay, just for giggles, we'll push on to 15 minutes. Okay, like I said in the beginning, this one's taken one for the team. I let it run past 15 minutes. Uh, temperature got up to about 115. And the pump may have killed itself. <laughs> so, lessons to be learned here. Don't let your, leave your key on for 50, or 20 minutes. When your fuel tank's dry, listen, listen to this terrible noise. I was like, ah! So, I mean, we'll let it cool off, but I think, you know, it's possible we uh, toasted that fuel pump. Uh, but it did take almost 20 minutes of running without any fuel going through it to get the temperature up to, and I noticed it, it might be uh, interesting to note that the hottest part of the pump is the base and it's uh if i fish around here i can get like 115 i know and that's the part that would be in the unusable fuel the way it's mounted in the uh the uh, holder there <clears throat> so you know this section would be inside our sorry submerged in fuel that you can't actually pump out interesting so did it get hot enough to cause uh you know an ignition no did it get hot enough to possibly destroy itself? Maybe. Um, which is odd because I know of electric motors that will operate at a much higher temperature than 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not hot at all. Um, so there's a possibility that this Keenan motor is just not a very good one. Um, where does it say? Oh, it's right there on the top. So what is that? A LG05? Something like that? Or are we looking at it upside down? Well, the brand name is right there. I'm assuming those numbers are the model number right there. Looks like LG05. Anyway, yeah, she's a little warm. Not hot, but warm to the touch. And if that's all it takes to destroy that motor, I'm not sure that that's the highest quality motor that we could have. Um, I also have one of these guys, which is an aftermarket. It's supposed to be high performance. You know, maybe we'll uh, run this guy for uh, 15 minutes and see if it gets hot. Because, you know, I'm in a destructive mode. Why stop now? So yeah, don't uh, don't leave your key on for more than 10 minutes. And who does that with a dry gas tank? Otherwise, you could, uh, you could hurt your pump. Uh, it did take a while to get... I mean, 10 minutes was still pretty safe. It didn't exceed... Uh, I don't know that it exceeded 80 degrees. Um, and the failure point seemed to be about 120 degrees. Although, it's probably not good for it. 
to even go 10 minutes. I'm sure it's not good for it to go five minutes at this point. Um, but running completely out of gas and leaving your key on would be where the where you would have to be to simulate what I just did here. Uh, that wouldn't be a simulation in that case. It would actually be, uh, 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 <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, haven't had coffee yet this morning. Um, it would be an actual test, uh, if, a real world test, if you, uh, for some reason, ran out of gas to the point where your motor quit and you rolled to the side of the road and just left your key on and listened to your pump whir away. Um, five minutes into that, you could possibly be causing damage to your pump. Um, I guess there's always the theory of a cumulative damage, but I think the damage is occurring once the temperature comes up. If you turn your key off right away and, you know, kill the power to the pump when you run out of gas, I'm not sure that you're hurting anything. Or in the case of riding your bike until there's only a quarter of a gallon of gas left, again, I'm not sure that you're hurting your bike as long as you're circulating fuel through the pump. It's going to keep the temperature way down. But don't run it dry for more than 15 minutes because you might get that cool noise that it makes now. So, myth or not? Not really a myth. You can't damage the pump. Um, if you allow it to continue to run uh, once your fuel tank is empty. And then I guess you have to put this in the real world. Um, again, I'm lost for words. I need to quit looking at the stickers on my, my tank or my toolbox. Um, you know, in real world uh, scenarios, you know, the accumulative damage of running your tank dry and then running your tank dry and then running your tank dry and then running your tank dry. Even if you left the key on for 15 seconds on a dry tank, I'm not seeing how that's hurting anything. I guess anything's possible. Uh, I don't think, you know, running your bike low on fuel is hurting anything. This is what I'm trying to say. Obviously running it out of fuel and leaving the pump turned on will hurt something. But I guess that's up to you guys to decide. I don't have a fuel pump anymore. In my Himalayan anyway. Um, but I do have other fuel injected bikes. And will I, you know, leave the key on with an empty tank for 15 minutes? Mm, probably not. I mean, that's just silly. Um, but I don't think there's any harm in running you know, down to your last quarter gallon of gasoline. I mean, and if there is, then that's just a really poor design electric motor if it can't handle 100 degrees for a few minutes, which it shouldn't hit 100 degrees inside your tank with fuel, which it, it actually never will. But uh, anyway, there's your experiment. There's your proof. What did it prove? I don't know. That's up to you. Ambient temperature, by the way, in the garage is about 65 um, so it's a little cool in here on a hundred degree day. This ex experiment might have, uh, been a little different. We might not have got 15 minutes. We might only got five minutes, but, um, anyway, pray for the motor. He sacrificed himself for your knowledge. If you liked the video, thumbs up and please subscribe. You guys have a good one and see you out there.